Hello everyone, I'm Kelvin Fox, and in today's Aruba Bots Automate video, we will be talking about the connectivity check monitor. Before continuing to the script, first, let's set up some context around here. In order to better understand the connectivity monitor script, we'll follow this agenda. Starting with the scenario we are trying to solve, then I will go over the setup, the prerequisites, and how to install the script using the Switches web UI. Then we'll jump into the fun portion of creating an agent from that script and running through its operation and how it works. Continuing on to adding a splash of possible customization to that script and ending with the resources available to you. The use case presented here is, much like the name of the script we're looking at now, a connectivity assurance and quality one, where the goal is to have constant monitoring on a link to a specific IP. If there are problems with reaching that IP, raise an alert, collect pertinent information, notify, and if programmed, execute some remedial action. First, I recommend watching the IPSLA with thresholds video. That is video number four in this NAE series. It has the explanations of service level agreements, the various SLA types and how to use them, and how to configure an SLA session using the switches CLI. The connectivity check script uses an ICMP Echo SLA session as the tool for monitoring. It is a more laser focused approach to a connection monitor than the IPSLA with threshold scripts. Connectivity check uses the timeout and the errors on the probe sent to determine the connectivity. The setup is quite easy. There needs to be an IPSLA ICMP echo session configured and started on the switch as explained on video number four. And then we can move on to installing the script. Using the switch's web UI, log in with a username and password with administrator privileges. You need to have administrator privileges to install scripts and create agents. Then we click on analytics, go to the scripts tile and click on the cloud icon. This window will populate with all the available scripts for the specific platform you are using. Find and select the connectivity monitor. Click install and confirm by the check mark on the installed column. Now that the script has been installed, I can now create an agent based on this script. Returning to my scripts list, selecting the script that I want and clicking on create agent. On the agent creation window, I can name the agent and provide the inputs for monitoring. In this case, the connectivity check rate and the name of the IPSLA session I have already configured and started. And finally, clicking on create. Having created the agent, now we have visibility into the status of the SLA session and a measurement of those probes timed out, which in normal conditions should read running for the SLA session and zero probes timed out. Agent creation starts mapping monitored values onto the time series database, creating a time stamped record of what goes on with these monitored values. Now, let us see the script in action. I'm going to manufacture a temporary break in the physical connection to that device I am monitoring the link to. That makes the probe's timeout count increase, the agent detects the issue, and raises the alert, demarcated by that triangle. It collects the pertinent information and has it available for the operator. It also marks the time when conditions return to normal with that green triangle, also executing the pertinent actions. Now that I have an always on monitor, and know exactly what network conditions make it spring into action, I can spice it up with some custom actions specific to what I would like it to do if this issue arises. And now we can talk about the possible actions I can add. First, I would want to change the alert level. I think red catches my attention a little bit more, but the alert level can be minor or yellow, major or orange, and of course, critical for red. And of course, we've already seen that it can be green for that normal status. Also, I can execute CLI commands, create custom syslogs, as we have seen on the script, it already contains both of these, and I can generate a custom report to make it nice and fancy to look pretty because, you know, who wouldn't? Returning to my plan to make that script deploy custom actions using the handy dandy NAE user guide found at the HPE support library, searching for actions, and scrolling down to the Action CLI section, I can use the example here 
to add my action. Using my preferred text editor, I added an action to, in case the alert is triggered because the IP is unreachable, replace that route with my secondary or backup route. Going back to the scripts list on my Switch's web UI, I can upload the newly renamed modified script, create the agent the same way as before, click on the agent name, bringing me back to the agent view. And now let me run the same scenario. Notice what happens now. The newly added actions execute when the alert is triggered. I change the behavior of the script to have a major alert once there's an issue, then a critical alert if those conditions continue. Only then execute the route change. Once more, the details of each event are accessible from the graph and from the alerts tile. On the critical alert, the commands to make the route replacement can be seen, replacing the primary route with the alternate. When the conditions return to normal, clicking on the green triangle shows the actions to undo that route replacement. There you have it. I identified the need for a monitor, chose the script that best suited my requirements, after running this script, I saw the opportunity to automate my response to the issue. I modified the script to execute the actions I wanted, uploaded my custom script and created an agent based on it. With that, I can let the monitor do the job I programmed it to do. Thank you for joining me on another automation journey. Don't forget to check out the other videos in this series. The links to all the documentation I talked about in the video will be in the description below. Don't forget to ask any questions that you might have on our Airheads developer community forum. Thanks again and until next time.